So tonight, we have a special guest. You've heard about him here in my vlogs, so let's go. Yo! What up, bro? What up, man? For my viewers, I mean, we're doing like a one-on-one -on -one interview kind of shit. It's us talking to each other about, you know, just photography stuff. It's like five questions. Hopefully, we get to finish it. We don't like take. Well, we both have we both have thirty minutes recording time on our hands. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, if that's enough, we can just always push the red button again. So, yeah. Fuck it. Let's get to it, man. Cheers. Cheers, man. So, shout out, liquor stash ph. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to order some alcohol yeah we'll put like their instagram down below all right so what? let's get to it you want to ask the first one you throw the first question first question is what triggered your love for photography so for me photography or taking pictures in general had been always like a hobby it started uh, probably in college when I started borrowing cameras and then I discovered smartphones S and the smartphones even then can take pretty good pictures and then it was when you got a camera and then I decided like yeah, I should get my own camera too so I've always liked taking photos I've always liked taking videos and making videos like you remember when you went to Talisayan, I made the video yeah, out yeah, of yeah. that. So it's 100%. always been something that I like doing. So what about you, man? Answer your own question. You you liked it more first. I mean, for me, it started when I was like, I switched. It was like last year, late last year, I switched to the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. I mean, the camera on that phone is crazy. Obviously, I'm back on the iPhone now, but I was like looking for videos on YouTube like and then I happened to run into Mr. Peter McKinnon so they were like comparing like I think it was the S10 plus it was the S10 uh, they were comparing it with the DSLR and then his friend I think it was Gabriel like they were trying to he was trying to guess which one was taken with the smartphone which one was taken with the camera and I was like Damn, there are a lot of things that a smartphone can't do that a regular, I mean, a DSLR or a camera could do. And then I started to watch more of his videos. And then we go to Henry's in Green Hills. And then, yo, I researched that camera. I mean, it's the 800D. It's in my box right now. But I want that. I know. I already know what I want. I want that camera. So <laughs> it's your turn, man. Yeah. So uh you've been taking pictures and shooting videos for like the past what six months now seven months seven, seven months. months so out of those seven months what what's your favorite aspect of photography or videography like what was it that you found that your favorite part all right for video it's more of like planning the shots ahead of time writing it down king 120 clips just to like my 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 product is like a 20 second video i mean i i it seems like it's a lot of work but honestly i do enjoy that like going through all the videos seeing my mistakes so that's for video for photo it's more of like it's creating memories but you know create the memories might as well make them look good mm -hmm. So when you look back, I mean, you don't get like, ah, oh, damn, I hope I, I, I shot a better photo of this. But overall, that's it. I mean, keeping those memories and making them look good. Answer yeah. your own damn question, man. Well, for me, my favorite aspect of it is like just the capturing, whether it's photos or videos, it's capturing the moment, whether it's for a vlog or it's for just for memories or even the product shoot that we did for Ronnie and L. I enjoyed the process of capturing those photos and capturing those moments as well. 
That's short and sweet. <laughs> you know me. Who, what, or who inspires you to keep on doing what you're doing? <laughs> but who inspires me or what inspires me is just creating something out of my hands. I am, I'm not... I'm not much of a painter, I'm not much of a sculptor, but I know that I can do something with the camera and do something even after shooting things. And like all of other, all of the other creatives out there, we just want to make beautiful things. And that's basically where I'm coming from. I like the aesthetic of it, I like the process of it, and that's what I dwell on. So basically, for me, it's basically the same. And what keeps me going is it's the journey of getting better. I mean, seeing I asked, uh, the other day, I was looking at my past videos, comparing it to my present videos now. I mean, it's not like perfect, but I can see that I've come a long way since like when we were, I remember, we were going to like photo walks in Manila and BGC in Makati being able to see myself progress not to toot my own horn but it's it's really what keeps me going because there are a lot of creatives there that we watch you and i watch like there's peter there's like uh there's matty and they all make so their videos are so good and it's not that i'm bummed about it but it gives me something to look forward to that damn one day my videos are gonna look like that I mean, oh, yeah. yeah, so that's what, that does it for me, man. So, my next question is, for the past seven months, would would you say you've been in a creative rut? And if so, how did you pull yourself out of that rut? I mean, I was in a rut, like, just this quarantine, man, this ECQ. Oh. So... Just, there's no there's nothing much to film there's nothing much to take pictures of until I got creative so you saw my Instagram link down below yeah. uh, I took pictures of myself with a drone indoors I yeah, mean, yeah. when I took That's those cool. yeah when I took when I took those photos it really started to get me going with photography actually to like to enjoy the process of photography because you know me I, I don't I like I was focused I was so focused on taking videos and I totally forgot about the other aspect I mean taking stills taking uh, photography but when I that click that I need I need to work on this now I need to work on my photography now so I shamelessly pose in front of a camera I use my brother so lucky that his services are free so it's like finding like ways to keep yourself creative i mean it could be the stupidest of things i made my drone fly in my room i actually crashed it by my ac unit i mean you know just it's it, you have to keep it going for yourself because there's during this quarantine there's not much external stimuli so yeah, yeah. you have to be willing to work with what you have and not be like choosy about your shoots and stuff like that. So for me, I did have a creative rut uh, because of the quarantine. I, I felt the same. I didn't have anything in mind to shoot or anything in mind to take photos or videos of. And then I just thought of what I really like shooting and that those are lights. And I set this up. So I set these lights up because I like lights in the bokeh. And I just thought maybe take some self portraits of it, uh, take some portraits of my niece. And that's where I dug myself out of. And that's, I laid the ground during the quarantine. And then a few weeks later, the vlog was posted so yeah I just i think for me it's really important to find what you want to do not just to 
think that ah, I have to shoot something because I need to practice or just feel the pressure that I have to do this. I think it's important that you want to do it first before you do it. I'm gonna ask you the next question. This is gonna be a pretty loaded question. So oh, yeah. yeah. So we we started like using a real camera almost at the same time. But you were like into photography before me. You, you I mean when we went to Talisay and you was the one holding like the camera of Pat and yeah, yeah. you actually took the videos, you edited the video for that. And my question is Yeah. Like, do you feel pressure when you see me like post like a dope shot or a dope video? Is like, does it pressure you? Does it have to be like pressure in a negative way? Well, honestly, no. Maybe because at the time you were shooting videos, I was taking photos, and I didn't really mind. I know, I knew then, and I know now that we're. We have two separate cameras, which means we have two separate perspectives, and however yours is gonna come out will definitely be different. And I think pressure is not the word to describe it, but maybe I feel encouraged that okay, I'm gonna see another side of this shot. I'm gonna see another side of this video, or yours will be moving images while mine are gonna be stills so it's a different feeling and it's it makes me want i think it has the same result of me wanting to do more because i want to match like the storyline of what you're doing with the shots that i'm taking as well so if that makes sense that makes sense but me honestly it's not that i feel pressured it's like When I see you take like dope photos and shit like that, I mean like, damn, I should be able to do that. I mean, I want to do that too, so I practice doing that. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah. Uh, oh man, I appreciate it. <laughs> like, I mean, basically we started at the same time, so we're like contemporaries. And but it's not that I don't want you to be better than me. It's like I just it I use it like to push myself. To be able to produce better images or better videos. Right. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, I mean, I take that lightly, man. I appreciate it. I mean, in like in a situation where you have like minimal external stimuli, you you have to get it from somewhere, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's not that I want you. I want to be better than you, but when I see you progress. And I I start to feel like I don't I'm not progressing and shit like that. It doesn't really pressure me, but yeah, you said it. You said the right word that it encouraged you yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah. to do better. I mean, I mean we're gonna be partners in this business. I mean, we're practically we, are. We shot a lot of stuff together. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but we should. I mean, I don't want to be like. Lagging behind. Yeah, yeah, I get. You. I mean, I, get you. I, I, I feel the same. I, I mean, mean, it's like. Kind of the same thing. All right, so <laughs> let's get a bit technical. So, what's your go-to transition style? Oh shit! You know me, man. You know my go-to transitions. I go. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like doing that whip shit. I mean, it looks stupid, but it looks great. And after you do some post-processing, and it gets you going, like. Makes you sweat. It's like hitting two birds with one stone. It's like taking a video and exercising, man. I mean, that's my style. Yeah, I, I guess for me that as well. I'm practicing that mixed with a little speed ramp, like speed ramp, whip. So like before uh, whipping, slowing down. I always do my whip with speed ramps. Oh really? So yeah, same inspirations. <laughs> what are your thoughts about <clears throat> acquiring gear like new gear how what what is the process that goes in your mind when you're trying to buy new gear I mean you just bought new gear yeah well like this I'm using a Canon EOS RP I've had it for like 
two weeks now. So like all of the videos that I've posted uh, were shot in this camera. But all of my previous photos, all of them were used with my Fuji X-T1. Well, for me, the buying of new gear is really about the use of it. Like, I'm not gonna buy a random lens, like a 28-80 lens, because I don't need it, because I don't have a reason for it. So, like, for me, everything I acquire, like, every lens I get, or the next body that I get, or the next microphone that I get, will all be in very good use and it will cover all the focal lengths that I need rather than just getting random lenses and random bodies because for me it's more of a practical thing so yeah so what about you I know you've you've got a lot <laughs> you have your shelf full I mean yeah like, same as you I just got the EOS R I think for three weeks now but last week I got a new lens was it last week yeah last week I got a new lens but I got that lens I mean I was choosing between the 24 to 70 or the 16 to 35 I got the 24 to 70 turned out it was malfunctioning so I had to return it so I went for the 16 to 35 and I'm so thankful that happened because if you see my vlog, I mean, like, look at all the angles I've been able to work with. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I started with a 16 to 35 because I've always been shooting tight when I was using my 800D. I was always on my, like, this one. I was always on this, the 30mm 1.4 when I was using the P7i. And getting a wide lens because you know me i always shoot in wide open aperture and shit and with wide you can't really do that because with wide you have to get everything in focus so i started practicing like shooting in f14 f10 f8 so when i bought it i mean it was for the purpose of vlogging but as well as when i when we can when we start traveling I want to take those landscapes. So oh, yeah. that's my what I'm trying to say is I, I digress. But <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that when I buy gear, it's usually for immediate need. Yeah, but when I buy gear, I mean it may look like I'm buying gear I don't need. But I actually do buy gear that I need and I'm thankful I bought a lot of the gear that I did during now that we're in this quarantine because i get to do a lot of shit i bought lights uh i bought a drone <laughs> and it ended up being so useful for me because it got me out of that rut yeah for me that's that's like my process that's why i have a lot of crap here okay <laughs> all right so my next question is what and this is my last question by the way so Okay, so would you rather shoot commercials or indie films? Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. That's, that, that's heavy hitter right there, man. I can't say both. Yeah, I can say both. Like, would you rather shoot commercials or indie films? I mean, I'm torn because of two things. I think commercials is where the big box are, big money. But no money involved. Oh, no money involved. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Indie films, man. You'd rather shoot indie films? Yeah, dude. That's that. I mean, I don't know if I told you that, but that's always been like my goal. I, I want. Shoot yeah, I want to film indie films. Indie films for sure. I mean, I get to tell a story. Indie films for me, for me, I feel like I'm gonna learn a lot more when I shoot film, indie films, rather than when I shoot commercials. Though I'm not knocking on shooting commercials, I just for me, I'd rather shoot film. Yeah, yeah, it's a preference question. Well, for me, I'd like to shoot more commercials 
I'd rather shoot commercials than indie films. And don't get me wrong, I like watching indie films. I like watching films in general. It's just for me that shooting it is a different thing. And I think I'd be able to explore myself more creatively if I shoot commercials rather than films. I mean, even more when it's a, like a free free reign kind of thing like do what you want to do with this and i'd write it up shoot it edit it ah uh, again there's like more of the creative freedom because yeah because you're not like working with the script or yeah something. yeah i guess when i said that i'd rather shoot indie films i also meant that i want to direct it yeah i mean yeah yeah i mean the whole thing yeah but i know yeah you i i'll be working with the writer but i mean I guess I'm just more into telling that kind of stories mm-hmm. because I don't know for me my creativity leans more on that just to like add another I mean not a question just want to get your thoughts on something mm-hmm. because I'm a person who tends to like get bummed out easily when it comes to this I mean I'm not like a person who who's easily affected by what other people think but since we started doing YouTube uh, I've been like I guess I focus a lot on the numbers I, I started YouTube before you yeah I posted a lot of videos already yeah I posted like starting started starting when the quarantine started, I started like posting stuff already. Yeah. But it always takes me like, like I post three videos consistently and then I stopped for like three weeks. Because in my mind, like, ugh, my, like my, my 25 subscribers ain't gonna miss me. So yeah. I guess what yeah. I'm trying to, to get to at is what are your thoughts on like, being too focused on the numbers and letting it get you down and shit like that. I mean, yeah, it seems, it, it feels nice to see the numbers go up, of course, in anything except like death statistics and blood pressure. But, and anything else, um, I try not to like indulge myself on those kinds of statistics like views or likes. Because for me, whatever I put out on the internet, whether whether it's Instagram or YouTube or Facebook, whatever I post, I know that I want to put that out there. Uh, it's my content, it's my video, it's my photo, it's my, it's me singing even sometimes, even though I'm not really like good at it. But it's something I want to do. And for the YouTube videos, if it gets views, then it gets views. I'm not if like what you said we're not really in it we're not really in it for the money we're not really in it to get famous but we just want to get our thoughts out we want to practice our filmmaking want to practice our editing we want to practice our storytelling so for me that's the focus the focus is if i'm gonna if i'm thinking of a video that i'm gonna post what is it about what what's the story what's in it who's gonna be in it the thought of who's gonna watch it or the thought of of how many views is it gonna get is not really much in the thought process of creating it because it's different like the numbers that you see on youtube like the number of views or the number of likes or what other statistics there are it's gonna be there and whether it's there or not would it matter if you're gonna put out a video or not because i don't think that we'll find our success in making videos or making small movies if we look on like the number of views because if we're doing it for the views then we'll definitely feel bad about what we're doing and that's something I don't want to feel. 
Good point. Good point. Okay. Another one for me. I mean, I've, I'm way past the five question limit here, but. Shoot that. What, how, how did you like decide on pursuing like photography and cinematography and decide to make it like, to try to make it into a legitimate source of income? For me, honestly, I'm not there yet. I mean, I know that it could be there in the future, like shooting brands or shooting for income. I know it's there. It's gonna be there. But for me right now, I have to get through the learning curve. I mean, I'm, I, I, I won't lie. I feel like I've taken some dope photos. Like I, the video I made about cookies was great, but is it really gonna be something that somebody's gonna pay for? And in the future, it's gonna be there. For me, it's just patience and practicing and doing it. So, yeah, I'd like it to be like a full-time career, but I know that I have. To get through what I need to get through before I get there, if that makes sense. That makes sense, actually. Uh, but you know, you know me, how I'm like so impatient and stuff. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean... I'm both impulsive and impatient. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to rush it, but there are times like where I feel like I need to rush it because. This is something I want to do full time. I mean, this is actually the first time in my life where I'm pursuing something that is creative. I mean, I've always been into business, I've always been into those kinds of stuff, but when I found this this thing that we're doing, uh it's it's full, it's very much it's more fulfilling. And I want to do that for like, I don't know, for the rest of my life, I guess. I want to do that. I want to remain creative. I'm so impatient with it. And the effect for me is like when I get so imp- it's so impatient with it, it's like I get bummed out. It's great for me that I have like people to keep me grounded. Like there's you, there's KitKat, there's actually Pat's helped out a lot. She's actually been trying to book us shit before the pandemic happened. I'm just try- I'm just really starting to enjoy the process. So enjoy the process for me and yeah. And for me, like making these videos now, it's like it's my platform of getting of getting what I say heard and we're doing this to for so as an outlet for our thoughts. The same for me, man. I ha- I want to talk about a lot. But I also know that there is a limit to attention. Like, if I talk for five minutes straight, I know that even if I watch it, I mean, I'm not, you, you, you do what you want to do. But for me, my personal preference is, I, one, I can't talk for that long. I think. I mean, dude, this video is gonna be like an hour's. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna cut it out in pieces. But I think for me, nothing else matters except for what you think and what you do. Through that, man, I mean, it's so like, it's so fulfilling that I get messages like the one I showed you earlier, like. Dude, I wanna do that too, but I want it to I want to use it as a platform for fitness. Uh, what I'm trying to say is like to my point earlier is the impact I have that I can make on people. Like someone reached out to me, I wanna do that. Someone reached out to me, what camera do you use? I mean that for me is like those are wins, dude. I mean, yeah, for sure. You get to inspire. You get to reach out to these people 
I mean, they didn't tell me directly that they inspired me, but I mean, I inspired them, you know. There's this one quote that I heard. I think it's from Casey Neistat. He said, don't get perfection in the way of good enough or something like that. I heard the same thing. It's not, yeah. but I think it's from different. I think I heard it from Beep. Uh, she, he said like, done is better than perfect. Exactly. And for me, what you do or what you put out will always be the best thing that you could put out on that day. So, if you look back like the two years from now or even like a month from now, you'll be editing a new video and you look back on the first video that that you made or the tenth video that you made it will always be incomparable because of the things you've learned along the way and the things that you've applied along the way it's a different thing always to judge yourself and let others judge you because it would be more discouraging if you think that ah what i did sucks rather than somebody telling you because you can always take like dude your video sucks and you'll be like yeah whatever okay but if you think it to yourself oh my god my video sucks and it would be it would bury you deeper than what anybody else can say if it comes from someone else if your video sucks i mean then maybe it's not for you yeah but if you say your video sucks i mean you made it I mean, it's something you made not for you that means you're not being who you are. If ever that time comes, you think that what you made sucks or like wh- whatever you do, like if you paint, if you cook, if you shoot photos and if you think that it sucks, then you should. it's your responsibility to know what you've learned from that and apply it to the next thing that you'll do. Exactly. That's, yeah, 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 100%. Wait. <laughs> 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 <laughs>